So now we have Oracle SQL Developer running against our database. Um, for our application that we're trying to design, our friends database, we have uh, connected to the database. We have everything we need to make it work. We have the table friends, and we have the field friend ID, friend name, email address, age, and favorite color. The data types are all correctly set, and we've used sequences and triggers to auto increment the integer friend ID and make it our primary key. So our database is set, and there's a little bit of sample data in there for us to view. Now we're gonna work on the MVC design pattern of our application. So we're going to make a model, which will be a Java class, that will correspond to the database table friends. Uh, so it has um, a, a property uh, for every database field. And then we're going to work on the servlet controller. And we'll actually have a couple of these. We'll have one that um, initiates the read of the database and then one that actually does the reading, the read query. So we'll look at those two. And then our JSPs for right now, they're just going to be, um, our, our view for right now, are just going to be a couple of JSP pages, uh, an index.jsp and a read.jsp. So if you remember our sitemap, it looks like this, our index page, We'll have a title, there might be some images on there eventually. View all friends, when you click that link, it will open up read.jsp. Read.jsp will use those servlets to query the database and return uh, all of the database records into an HTML table for us here. If we delete one, it will delete and take us back to read. If we update one, it will update and take us back to read. And if we add a new friend, it will add and take us back to read. And in all of those cases, we'll see the updated table. If it's deleted, the row will be gone. If it's updated, we'll see the change in the row, or if it's added, there'll be a new row here for us. So this is what we're gonna work on right now, This uh, getting this read to work correctly. So this is gonna be the design for read. So it's going to be called from index.jsp when they click on view all friends. It's going to also be called from the add, update, and delete. And we saw that in the previous diagram. So read servlet will set up the read query object. And the read query will make a database connection, create a statement. That's going to be our select star from SQL statement. Um, and then it will query the database and then process those, the results coming from the database into a table. So this read query is going to need a couple of helpers. Uh, it's going to need uh, the model friends, and this will have uh, all the same fields or all the same properties uh, that we have for database fields with similar data types. Uh, and then we're gonna have a DB connections property, uh, and this will be the driver name, the server name, the username and password. This lets us essentially store the username and password in one file, and then we can omit this file from Git so that our username and password are not publicly available. It also makes it very modular. So if in the future we switch from Oracle database to, to a MySQL database, we can just make those changes in here. Uh, and the read query class is just simply reading this file to get the information. So when those results come back in the table, um, they're um, put into a table, parsed into a table in the re read query class. Uh, and that table is passed on to the read servlet, which eventually is going to be passed on to read.jsp. And then it will let that table appear in our page where we would like it. So let's uh, start digging in here first by creating our model. Uh, and then the next thing we'll do is create the database connection properties. We'll put the driver in our project that lets these things connect. And we will set up uh, index.jsp uh, with the view all friends hyperlink uh, and to, uh, to have everything ready there. We'll commit all that to get and then we'll get into actually building the read query class and the read servlet. First thing I need to do in NetBeans is to create a new project. Java web, web application project. I'm going to call it friends app.
and we can see the project is creating. Okay, our project is created. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and use get to manage this project. After I've changed into the correct folder for my friend's application, I need to initialize git, git init. And I've just um, initialized and committed everything uh, for my project here, just as the um, the initial commit. Uh, so now let's uh, we'll do some work. So now let's get rid of this index.html, and we will create an index.jsp. And now you'll notice with this hyperlink, now you notice with this hyperlink, the URL is a little different. I'm going to, um, I have it set to just read. Um, it's not a page, but it's going to be a servlet that'll be called. And so I'll map that read servlet over to read. Uh, so it's looking for this URL mapping. So let me save this. And I will just look at it. Yeah, it's doing what I expected it to do. Uh, nothing's going to work yet, so that's okay. So I have this index.jsp uh, set for now. Uh, next thing I want to do, I have to have this model and this database connection properties. So I'll work on uh, configuring those two files. If I'm going to use the MVC design pattern, I'm going to come over here under source packages uh, and create the model and the controller packages. I'll do a new Java package, call it model. A new Java package and call it controller. And when I look at that read query and that database connection uh, properties file, those are going to be database helpers. So I'm going to create a new source package or new Java package called DB helpers. And now I'm going to build the new Java class for this model. So inside of the model, I'll select a new Java class. I'll call it friends with a capital F to signify it's a class. Just inside the public class here, I will declare some private variables. Uh, and these variables will uh, very closely match the database fields and the data types will closely match what is in the database. Uh, again, the database fields. Making them private, they'll be available across different uh, properties and methods uh, as we go down under here. The next thing I need to do is create a constructor. I'm going to source and insert code. 
I'm going to generate a constructor and select all of the all of the fields here. Now this is what's known as an overloaded constructor. I also want to create a default constructor, so I'll just copy this and paste it. And I'm just going to blank out all of the, the information, set it to null, or set it to the default of zero for integers. Uh, and this default constructor can be used um, if we don't know exactly what we want to pass or um, it, it's some unusual circumstances, but it's good programming practice to put the, the uh, default constructor in there. This is my normal constructor, my overloaded constructor. Okay, so my constructors are set. The next thing I need are the getters and setters so that I can get this information out of my class or set this information into my friend class. I can do those automatically. Getter and setter. Again, I'm going to choose all the fields. And it puts them in getter setter pairs so I can get the friend ID or read the friend ID or I can set the friend ID or write into the friend ID. Same for friend name, email address, age, and favorite color. And the last thing that I want to generate is the toString method so that my information can just be dumped to a string if I choose. Again, I'm selecting all the fields. And I now have a well-formed Java class that I'm going to use as my model. It has the variables declared. These names closely match what's in the database field. They don't have to, but I've chosen to. The data types need to match what's in the database field, and they've been set to private so they can be used across all these methods. I have a default constructor where everything has been nulled out. I have the overloaded constructor that will actually accept the information. I have getters and setters for each field, and I have a two-string method. The next thing that I want to create will be that database connections uh, properties file. So I'm going to go under database helpers because it'll be it's a database file. I'm going to choose new, other, and here we're going to use the pro the filter for the first time. I'm going to search for properties. And if I choose other, I can see a properties file. I'm going to call it DB connection or DB con. And after the file is created, I enter the pertinent information I need. Um, I need the driver name in order to connect to a database. I need to know the server name or the URL of the server I'm going to connect to. It has a port number and an SID. I'll need to know the username for the database that I want to connect to, and I'll need to know the password for the database I want to connect to. Uh, and so this information will need to be uh, customized for you, and I'll put, uh, I'll put it up on icons so that you can see uh, what the actual information should be. And the last thing that will be important to add for database connectivity to get set up for the read query class here will be the driver. And the driver knows how to take Java and turn that into Oracle SQL. It knows how to take those two different things and make them interact. So I need to install the driver. And to put the driver in, I'll first download it. I'll need this ojdbc6.jar file. And I can download this from Oracle. You can Google it. Uh, and download it. Uh, I'll also make this available on ICON. It's the Oracle to Java Database Connector 6. If you are using MySQL, this would be a different JAR file. If you're using Microsoft SQL Server, this would be yet a different JAR file. This is specific for Oracle to Java. Now that I have that file, I need to put it into my project. It will be a library 
right click and add a new jar. And I can see it's working. And it brings the OJDBC6 jar file into our project. So now the connectivity, all the, the side connectivity uh, that we have for this database is, is there. Here's how we're going to connect to it, the username and password and URL. Here's the model. So when we bring information back, we're going to get it. Or when we're going to push information to, we're going to set it. Uh, and we have the driver. So now that I have all of my um, dependencies for the database set up, my database connection properties, my model, and my uh, driver file, uh, this is probably a good time to make a commit in Git. And I do not want this dbcon.properties to be saved on my GitHub. So I need to use the .git ignore file. And if I Look, it doesn't appear to be there with an ls, but if I do an ls-a for all, I can see that there is in fact a .git ignore file. It's a hidden file, that's why it has the dot in front of it. So if I want to edit it, I'll edit it in v. And I can already see it's excluding the build directory. I wanted to also exclude the dbcon.properties file. Okay, now that I've added that file to my database connection, I will get status. and everything looks good.